all relativistic phenomena are, are real. Relativity definitely is one of the biggest achievement, achievements of physics, but relativity theory is not real. <laughs> this, is, this is really something very, very interesting. If we see in special relativity, there is no coordinate time, there is no proper time, there is, there is no outer observer, there is no inner observer. All these are just mathematical tools that Einstein managed to, to describe a relative rate of clocks. <laughs> but also here, he was not very clear because uh, a relative rate of clocks is valid for all observers, has nothing to do with the observers. It is a direct consequence of the variable energy density of superfluid space. And also in general relativity, there is no curvature of space. <laughs> there is no time dilation. There is no all these mathematical tools. Nothing of this exists in physical reality. So uh, anyway, uh, relativity is a great achievement, but it, it, this is mathematical achievement. OK. Einstein was very clever, and he put all things together, so it seems that it works. But basically, it works only to the certain extent. And we have in the in general relativity, in special relativity, we have contradictions. Uh, as this time travel, which is absolute nonsense. And then uh, this idea that, uh, that a certain uh, that uh, rate of clocks depend on of uh, on uh, which observer observe it observe observe it observe the clock. <laughs> That's absolute nonsense. Uh, uh, so uh, Einstein did not understand relativity him, uh, himself very clearly. Like this idea with the photon clock. You know, you have a photon clock. Uh, and then, and then for the rest observer, the photon clock is uh, uh, is running slower because he he would see photon moving moving zigzag. <laughs> so the fact that he sees photon moving zigzag is only an optical illusion. But because of optical illusion, clocks that cannot have different rate. You understand? So this is this hocus pocus physics, you know, uh, the, the photon clock, which is in the fast moving system, this fast moving system is interacting with the superfluid space and integrating the energy of the superfluid space. And this is the kinetic energy, actually. And if this go very fast, this is relativistic mass. And because of this, the energy density in the, such a moving, fast moving object is slower, and that's why clocks run slower. <laughs> but it has nothing to do with the observer. You know, we have a GP GPS, we have a GPS system. Clocks run because of special relativity effect on the on the satellites. Satellites they run for for seven microseconds seconds per day slower than on the Earth. And for for the general relativity effect, they run for forty five microseconds faster than on the Earth. But this is valid for all observers. <laughs> if, this would be, if this would depend on which uh, uh, reference frame, in which reference frame is observer, then GPS would not be possible, you know? <laughs> and then this uh, uh, de uh, decay of, uh, of pions, you know, which they are entering the atmosphere because if some potential observer would be there because of their speed, he would see that atmosphere is only two kilometers or something thick. This is all nonsense. The, 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 the time of decay of peons is because they move very fast. And because of this, they increase relativistic mass. And because of this, they decrease energy density of space, and be because of, of this, they, they, their decay is, is sl slowing down. 
the entire relativity can be described with the variable energy, energy density of time invariant space and with the property of a time invariant superfluid space that is moving, the local space is moving and rotating with the stellar objects. That's the whole point. That that's this this is it. <laughs> there is no time as a four dimension of space. There is no curator of space. There is no all these things in the universe does not exist. That's why we have such a big trouble to connect uh, relativity with quantum mechanics. Yeah, because relativity. A theory of relativity is not a physical theory. This is a mathematical theory. And uh, Einstein was a great was a great mind, but we have to understand that the big mind, the great mind, also make great mistakes. <laughs> and abolishing ether from physics, this was the biggest mistake that was ever done in physics. Now ether is coming back to the back door in physics as a superfluid quantum space or quantum vacuum or, or physical space. You, you, you take name you like, but basically universal space is a fundamental energy of the universe. And this is a four dimensional type of energy. An atom is three dimensional type of energy. An atom are made is made out of elementary particles, which again, they have more dimensions, okay? Already photon is four dimensional. Photon has magnetic component and electric component. Magnetic component, component of the photon is the excitation of the superfluid space on X1, X2, X3. And electric component of photon is excitation on X2, X3 and X4. So happy new year, everybody. And you can check, I wrote three articles, how to advance relativity, how to, how to create relativity theory that is a physical theory. And it can become physical theory relativity if we consider superfluid space as a fundamental arena of the universe. We have to extend the mass energy equivalence principle on the universal space and relativity works perfectly. Sure, <laughs> if I would be from Oxford or Cambridge or me, they would say, wow, great, <laughs> great achievement. But as I'm in Slovenia and I'm nobody, I have a private institute, nobody will give me any attention, at least maybe in my life, but maybe in 50, 60 years, they will say, yeah. This guy was good. This guy was good. I really don't care. <laughs> this is how lives run. 